Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I will be going over how to get your Pokemon VGC ready. I will be covering breeding, hyper training, and EV training. First things first, what does it mean to be VGC ready? Essentially it means that your Pokemon have optimal IVs, usually all 31. Additionally, it will have maximum EVs allocated. Finally, its held item, ability, and moves are all in place. We will be focusing primarily on EVs and IVs. In order to reach optimal IVs, you have two choices. Number one, breeding, and number two, hyper training. Hyper training is the shortcut method to getting perfect IVs. You cannot hyper train to get anything less than 31 IVs, so for trick room Pokemon you will still need to breed to obtain minimum speed. In order to hyper train, you will need either a bottle cap or a golden bottle cap. A bottle cap can be used to hyper train one stat. A golden bottle cap can be used to maximize all six of your stats. You can purchase bottle caps for 20k each at the Deli Bird Shop. To hyper train, you must speak to this guy in Montenevra next to Obama Snow. Keep in mind, Pokemon will need to be at least level 50 to be hyper trained. Now for breeding. Breeding is a mechanic which allows you to use two compatible Pokemon to create a third new Pokemon. This Pokemon will have three of its parents' IVs and three random IVs. If you are using Pokemon of different species that share an egg group, the female Pokemon will be the Pokemon that is produced. In previous games, this would be done using a daycare, however in Scarlet and Violet, the only way to breed is by using the picnic mechanic. When on a picnic, if there are breeding capable Pokemon in your party, they will periodically create an egg. Breeding compatible Pokemon include two of the same Pokemon, two Pokemon who share an egg group, or any Pokemon capable of breeding paired with a ditto. By default, it takes forever for an egg to be produced. However, gaining an egg bonus from eating certain food either made or purchased will increase the speed of egg production to around 2-3 to three minutes each, getting even faster with higher egg bonus levels. If one of the parents is holding the Destiny Not Held item, then instead of the Pokemon inheriting 3 of its IVs from its parents, it will instead inherit 5. Additionally, if a parent Pokemon is holding the Everstone Held item, the new Pokemon will inherit the parent's nature. Once an egg is created, it will be retrievable from a basket next to the table. This basket can hold up to 10 eggs at a time. Hatching eggs seems to take around 3-4 to four minutes of running mounted. Having a Pokemon with the Flame Body ability will reduce the time it takes to hatch eggs by 50%. Once you've got your Pokemon with perfect IVs, you will need to give them EVs. You again have two choices to do this. Number one is Battle Training, and number two, Vitamins and Feathers. You do have the option to use money to purchase vitamins which will increase a Pokemon's EVs by 10 each, for a cost of 10k per vitamin. Seeing as each Pokemon requires 508 EVs, this would require 510k per Pokemon, so I can't say I'd recommend this. The most efficient way to EV train is by battle training. Every Pokemon in the game gives 1-2 to two EVs upon being defeated. Generally, this is tied to a Pokemon's highest stat, but not in all cases. You can find which Pokemon gives which EV stat on Cerebi. In addition to this, you can add a power item which will cause you to gain an additional 8 EVs for each Pokemon defeated. This additional amount will be determined by which power item is held. You can buy these power items from the Deli Bird Shop for 10k each. These are an absolute must. I would recommend picking up at least one of each of these. When EV training, you will have to keep track of each battle, as there is no in-game way of telling how many EVs a Pokemon has. An easy way to do this is simply to track your move PP. Generally when EV training, you will have a high level advantage against the Pokemon you're EV training against, so you will be one-hit KOing most Pokemon, meaning that you can essentially use your current PP as a tracker for how many Pokemon you've defeated. If you are simply training for two max stats, 252, 252, 4, then all you will need to do is find a spot that has Pokemon which give you one of your desired stats. Attach the relevant item and start battling. It is important to note that the new auto battling mechanic does not grant EVs. You will have to individually battle each Pokemon in order to EV train. Once you have maximized your stat, usually 26 to 30 battles, it's time to switch over to the other item. Now you have a choice. If there is a good spot you know of to train that second stat, you can go there. Otherwise, since the other stat you've trained is already maxed, 
you can continue to farm the same Pokemon just with the different held item on, netting you plus 8 EVs each battle. This may take slightly longer as you won't be getting the one or two additional EVs per Pokemon you battle, but it will make things much less complicated if you ask me, as you can just continue farming the same route you were before. If you can find a mass outbreak of Pokemon that give you the stat that you need, this can be a very great way to farm EVs, as the Pokemon will continuously start respawning around you instead of you having to search them out. If you are trying to train specific EVs, then I would highly recommend keeping close active count of each battle, and which Pokemon your battle is against, as some give one EV and others give two. You can also use feathers to raise your EVs by one at a time to reach the perfect EV level you are going for. If you find that you need to reduce a Pokemon's EVs, you can do this using the Palm Egg, Kelpsy, Qualot, Hondu, Greppa, and Tomato Berries which will increase a Pokemon's happiness while decreasing one of the stat's EVs by 10 points depending on the berry used. To change a Pokemon's nature, you can use Nature Mints purchasable from the Chansey Shops for 20k. To change a Pokemon's ability, you can use Ability Capsules purchased from the Chansey Shops for 100k each. Additionally, to unlock a Pokemon's hidden ability, you must use an Ability Patch. Currently, this is only obtainable from rank 6 Terra Raids with a 1% chance to drop. To change a Pokemon's Terra type, you will need to collect 50 Terra Shards of the type you want by defeating Terra Raids of that type, usually 2-3 to three Shards per Raid. Bring these Shards to the Treasure Eatery Restaurant in Medali, and you can select a Pokemon to change their Terra type. Some final notes here, Pokejobs from Sword and Shield are officially gone unfortunately, so these are the only options for EV training remaining in the game. You can purchase PP ups from Chansey stores for 10k each, which increases the PP of your moves up to three times. Most VGC held items can be purchased from one of three Delibird shops located here in Mesagoza, one located here in Lavincia, and the final one located here in Cascarafa. Chansey shops can also be found at these locations, but all have the same stock. An easy way for your Pokemon to learn egg moves is by having your Pokemon that wants to learn an egg move hold the new Mirror Herb held item purchasable from the Cascarafa Deli Bird shop for 30k. Ensure your Pokemon has an open move slot. This can be done from the Pokemon summary menu by changing moves and deleting a move. Then have a Pokemon in your party that knows the egg move you want. Then go on a picnic. Within a minute, your Pokemon will learn that egg move. You can see a list of egg moves for each Pokemon on Cerebi for those interested. Do keep in mind that if you have multiple Pokemon in your party that knows moves which your target Pokemon can learn as egg moves, you may not learn the move you want, so I'd recommend simply using the target Pokemon and the Pokemon which knows the move to make a clean transfer. Finally, if you are wondering what the best thing you can do with your time to generate resources for breeding and training your Pokemon, I would recommend simply spamming Terra Raids. Not only do they give you experience candies, vitamins, nature mints, Terra shards, and more, but they also give you treasures, which you can sell for a good amount of money, and the Pokemon caught from these raids will usually have at least two perfect IVs, which can save you a lot of money and time in the breeding and hyper training process. If you intend to tackle six star terror raids, I would recommend having your Pokemon at level 100, EV trained, and holding an item. Additionally, it's extremely important to have a positive type matchup. Not only should you have super effective damage into the target, but resisting or immuning damage from the Pokemon is invaluable, as these high level raids will take some time and having your Pokemon knocked out is extremely difficult to come back from. And that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you think about how VGC prep works in Scarlet and Violet in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you there.